everyone, this is Britta Riley. She's one of um, Ivy's latest artist residents. I can say that. She's actually a good friend. She's brilliant. And I'm really excited she's here. And she's here to talk to you about R&D IY. So here you go. So it's about to become abundantly obvious that I had no idea what an Ignite presentation was. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about a project that my lovely collaborator, Rebecca Bray, and I have been working on. It's really emerged out of some of our recent artwork. Um, we make participatory work mostly for museums, and um, but also as our own artwork, as I said. And one of our latest projects was called Drink Pee, Drink Pee, Drink Pee. And it was about the water pollution that's caused by the fact that our pee goes virtually untreated right out into the waterways. And so um, the untreated or the undigested drugs in our pee cycle right back into our own drinking water supply. And they also, um, the nutrients in our pee also cause harmful algae blooms out in the ocean. Now we're, uh, we totally love the scientists who we're all counting on to fi fix these problems for us, but they're in a really tricky position. Because they have to so solve the problem for everyone, they have to come up with solutions that involve a lot of infrastructure. So they figured out how to take all of the polluting parts of our pee out and turn it into agricultural fertilizers but you should know that that means putting in new pipes from every one of our houses to the sewage treatment plant. So we got it. We were like, okay, pea can become fertilizer for your plants. But what would happen if you could just do it closer to home and use the fertilizer on your own plants? So we decided that we were going to figure out how the hell to do this. Um, but we can only understand about 10% of the scientific journal articles. But we discovered that within about two degrees of, so of separation in our so social networks, we could figure out somebody who knew how to do this chemistry. And so then it was just a, a matter of finding out how to do it at home with our own tools and to figure out how to do it for one person's pee at a time. And the idea was to try and get as many people as possible doing this project. So we came up with DIY kits, instructables, we even did a segment on the Discovery Channel. And, um, but what we found is that people weren't, they were totally psyched about this project. We had like 50 people turning their pee into fertilizer for their plants. But they didn't just want to use what we had made. We found out that they really wanted to be part of the invention part of all this. They had ideas about how to make something that you could carry around with you and pee into. And, um, but the weird thing was that they felt like they always needed to ask our permission first, because it was like our project. And, but we didn't want to be creating something that was like another proprietary project, a product. We were far more fascinated by the fact that they were coming up with all of these different solutions to all different kinds of problems. And so we figured the real environmental solution would be to harness some of this innovation from the end users. And so what we've ended up doing is a crowdsourcing project where now we're focused a little bit more on our process. Um, what was it that we did and what do scientific researchers do when they're developing new products or, or services? And um, this yeah, so we uh, took a look at what worked in our past projects, and really it was really just about giving people a place to start and having them feel like their input was legitimate. And you know, then they were kind of ready to go crazy about this. So underneath the umbrella of R&DIY, we're now starting on a new project. And this is kind of like an alpha test for the R&DIY concept. And um, we're starting with a new environmental problem and we're crowdsourcing it with a small crowd to start off with. And the idea is to output a whole bunch of different designs for hydroponic gardens that grow vegetables in people's New York City windows. So now I get to the challenge, the challenging part of this. What we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with tools that you know, this process might actually output an instructable and you might refer to a wiki, but um, it's, this, the process itself is much more like open source software development. So we're trying to build tools that let people build on work that other people started. And, um, you know, all of you brilliant people might have ideas for us and we sure don't want to reinvent the wheel. So if you have 
ideas about how we should go about this, please talk to us. And that's our email address.